In this bit of the video, I'm just going to show you how I set up my dialysis table um, and what I've actually got on it to actually set up. I've got one sterile pack, four of these 10 mil needles, uh, syringes, sorry. I've got a blue rinse connector, which actually comes in the packs with the lines. I've got my dialysis access needles, the fistula needles, um, and the size that I use is 16 gauge. The reason that my needles are both red um, arterial needles is that I need a special lens to actually insert the needles and remove them by myself. Um, and they don't have any of the venous ones, the blue ones. I have three of these sunny cloths for actually cleaning the ports and cleaning the table. My anticoagulant, which is tins of parry, and also the saline, uh, which I need for actually flushing the lines um, at the beginning and at the end of dialysis. So I'm just going to wipe the table first of all. My hands are already clinically clean, which means that I've already washed them uh, with soap and water and I'm just cleaning them over with the hand gel because I've touched the outside of the packs. And I'm just going to wipe the table down now with the sand cloth. Um, This table is actually quite stained from um, various um, spillages over the years but my pack is sterile and it's not going to um, hopefully have any tears in the base of it. Um, while that's drying I'm just going to pop my tape on the table that I need to take the lines the reason I do a longer piece as well is to actually attach the bag to the table because the bag um, for the rubbish doesn't actually stick to this table like it would in a clinical setting. Um, I tear off a piece to actually secure the lines to my arm as well um, and also another extra piece and a small piece. Um, to make a little swab um, just in case I have problems um, inserting the needles at the beginning of dialysis which hopefully isn't going to happen I usually do my tapes quite long um, too short and they're going to start um, peeling off. Okay, so I'm just going to open my pack. it before putting hand gel on my hands again because the packing sign is sterile. Apologies in advance if I need to get up uh, halfway through and just uh, stop the camera whatever reason. When I open the pack, if you notice, I'm not actually putting my fingers inside the pack um, and touching the sterile field which is inside. Um, I'm just picking up the bag now. Um, I 
if you do have a table that allows for the bag to stick like a plastic table um, you will need to turn the bag inside out to actually tear the strip off to actually make it adhere to the table um, you probably those who are on maintenance dialysis noticed the nurses doing that The rubbish goes in the bag. Um, just get my hands up the rubber again because I've touched um, the packaging to actually go in the bag. And I'm just going to remove the gloves from the pack because I don't use gloves. Um, there isn't actually any need for me to use gloves because nobody else is going to be touching um, these packages or the sterile field or anything like that um, it's only myself um, that is exposed to my own microorganisms so there's no risk of cross infection um, which is a bonus really for those on home dialysis who are able to um, insert their own um, one of the big risks of maintenance dialysis which is in centre dialysis is the risk of hospital acquired infections um, <clears throat> which ultimately are, you know, are going to cause problems um, for the individual you know, it can lead to further hospital admissions um, and obviously making you feel very unwell in the process so I'm just carrying on opening all the things that I'm going to use try not to hold the packages over sterile fields to actually open them because um, again you're disturbing microorganisms then um, going over the sterile field but not too worried in the home environment give you IV lines is that you need one of the connectors in it for actually um, withdrawing the saline um, to flush the lines with um, and also in case you need to do an emergency wash back um, if for whatever reason there's a problem with the lines clotting at the end um, you're not able to wash back the same line which actually comes through online um, personally if it was me and I'm on my own um, and there's a need for doing it an emergency wash back um, at the end um, by manual means I would rather lose the circuit at the end um, than actually risk standing up if I'm on my own by myself to wash back um, you know the blood at the end um, to me that's more of a risk is standing up on your own before you've checked your blood pressure um, and checked that you've actually feeling okay at the end of treatment um, it's it's more of a risk to actually do that than just lose the circuit at the end so that's just one of my tips that's that's what I would do um, so now I'm just going to take this connector off the end to actually insert um, this connector um, this was actually sterile it had um, an outer bag that I actually removed before treatment 
um, I usually just give it a check over just to make sure that the saline is clear inside. Um, all these things have an expiry date um, and it is in date. I check that there's no particles or debris in the fluid and the quick way of doing that is just holding the bag up to the light and checking that you can see um, the um, writing through the other side just to make sure um, that the fluid is okay to use. So I'll just put my hands a quick wipe over again. Um, before I insert the connector. This connector comes again in a little sterile bag um, and to prevent holding and touching the actual end of it which is going to come into contact with the syringe I just hold it in its packaging take the cap off um, and insert it into the saline like that so I'm not actually touching the end of the connector um, once I've inserted that um, I don't turn it upside down because obviously the fluid is going to drip out so a way of doing it that I do it is actually just pop it in between the legs and just hold it there um, and then just to be on the safe side even though I've not touched it I just give it a quick wipe over with the sammy cloth or alkalites as they used to be known in the old days and couple of seconds or a few seconds to dry um, ideally it should be 30 seconds in a clinical setting because um, things like gel and sunny cloths need to be able to work once they dry so you have to wait for them to dry so you might see again in a clinical setting nurses waiting a few seconds um, for things to dry in between and it's all just precautions. While it's drying I usually um, adjust the clamps on the lines and then I'm just going to draw up the same line which I need. Now because I tend to dye lines quite a bit on my own um, when my daughter's not here and also she's not trained to actually um, have any dealings with the dialysis I have um, emergency saline ready should I need to come off treatment quickly if I'm feeling unwell um, I need to remove the lines quickly for whatever reason so normally um, if you were doing it with a carer or in the clinical setting these um, light, these syringes full of saline wouldn't actually be ready until the end of treatment to flush the lines. Um, so what I do to have them ready is I use the blue rinse connector, um, which you see them using at the end of treatment um, in hospitals and dialysis units. Um, it's just connect the two syringes with the rinse connector ready should I need them quickly and I'm just getting the 10 mils of saline that I need now to actually flush the lines with some units they may not use um, saline to actually flush the lines when they're going in and just insert lines um, but I was always taught it's a safer practice um, to flush them with saline beforehand 
uh, which can help prevent um, any potential air bubbles getting in to your cardiovascular system which ultimately can be very dangerous and um, it's all about minimising risk to yourself. When I've drawn up the saline, what I do with it is I usually just pop it in this apple plastic drawer I have at the side of me. Um, I usually have next to me um, all the spares that I might need during treatment, spare sanic cloths, syringes, needles, tape, all those kind of things, swabs, I have plenty of swabs, um, should I have any um, excess bleeding from my access at the end of treatment, um, I've learned over the years to be always be prepared um, for any event really um, and have plenty of spare packs as well at the for yourself should you need them at the end of treatment. Um, uh, also at the side of me I have my BP monitor, um, I have my dialysis record sheet, um, my reading glasses for um, various obvious reasons, um, something to eat, I always make myself a sandwich, um, some water I have, I have my uh, Rena gel which are the phosphate binders next to me. Um, to have when I eat um, the phone should I need to make any emergency contacts or someone phones when um, when my daughter's not in um, and I also have um, a community alarm pendant as well um, never needed to use it but it just gives me that bit of peace of mind should I be um, in a situation where I need emergency um, emergency help um, so I'm just going to um, prepare the swab that I may need should I have a problem inserting the needles And then um, I'm just going to cover over the table for a moment, um, just while I stop the video, um, and then I'll be with you again in a second. The other side of the debate is the fact that if you don't get adequate clearance obviously um, it can cause problems in between dialysis treatments um, you know with the potential to build up harmful toxins in between and um, also if you don't clear um, enough fluid as well during treatment um, that can also cause problems be between treatments because the more fluid you actually gain in between uh, dialysis treatments, which is actually called interdialactic weight gain, um, that has the potential to cause cardiovascular problems. It can cause the heart to swell. Um, careful monitoring of how much fluid you're gaining between treatments is actually necessary as well um, because the more fluid you have to remove during dialysis um, can also cause um, cardiac problems over a period of time it um, can cause something called myocardial stunning which is um, basically um, damaging the heart over a period of time. Um, that is one of the reasons why home hemodialysis um, is actually better for the individual because fluid doesn't build up as much between treatments because you're having more regular dialysis. Um, 
I dye lines alternate days um, between 15 and 16 hours one week and 12 hours another week um, and I don't have a two day break um, unless I'm actually going away for the weekend somewhere um, or if you know I'm unwell or having an off day or whatever but it's extremely rare that I have a, a two day break. The two day break um, is what is dangerous for dialysis patients. Um, those on maintenance dialysis um, will have regular two day breaks which cause the build up of fluids, the build up of toxins um, and over a period of time that is causing long term damage to your body. So um, that is one of the reasons why I decided to do home dialysis um, because research has shown um, a greater life expectancy for those on home hemodialysis. Um, nocturnal dialysis um, is, is recommended as, as one of the best forms of, of dialysis. Um, but for me, I, um, I don't consider that a viable option at the moment um, because I think it would be too much responsibility uh, for my daughter who is only um, a young teenager um, and, I, and I don't think it's fair to actually put that responsibility onto her um, that I'm dialysing overnight. Um, you know, if, if there was a fire or something during the night, um, if the needles dislodged, um, but, but for some, um, you know, if, if you're able to do it, you know, you should be able to do nocturnal dialysis if, you know, you do have another responsible adult in the house. Um, so I'm just going to... Um, start inserting my needles otherwise we'll be here all day. <laughs> I'm just doing my hands again and the needle um, you can actually see it's got wings on the end of it which actually bend forward um, and to insert the needle I actually hold and bend the wings of the needle um, it has you'll notice um, you might I don't know if you can see this on camera but there is a black dot on it there and then if it's turned round to the other side there is a red dot the needle should be inserted with the black dot um, facing upwards, i.e. towards you, which means the bevel, the sharp point of the needle, is going in um, the right way. Um, the needles um, need to be inserted, the arterial needle, which is the lower needle, um, needs to be inserted at least three fingers away from the anastomosis um, i.e. the joining of um, the artery to the vein to actually form the fistula that is what a fistula is basically um, it allows um, a large blood vessel to be formed to um, pump out as much blood as possible to actually um, be filtered through the artificial kidney. So I hope you can see this. I'm holding the wings of the needle. I've got the syringe in my left hand um, and as you can see they're a good length for me to be able to hold um, with my left hand. And I'm checking the fistula and I'm just going to insert the needle at an angle and 
then I pull the syringe upwards to flush, then start flushing the line all the time and checking the line to make sure there are no air bubbles actually going to be inserted um, so I don't tend um, to focus too much on the needle once it's in um, and making sure that I'm not inserting any air bubbles um, once the needle's in I actually tape down the wings first of all um, sometimes the tape can get stuck to your fingers but you find ways of um, sorting it out yourself. So I've, once I've taped it down I'll just give it another flush just to make sure um, and then I tape over um, the two pieces of tape that I've already taped over the wings by forming um, a v-shaped chevron to make sure that the needle can't become dislodged because um, it's got that V of tape underneath to prevent the needle actually pulling out um, it stops it would stop that from happening so now I'm going to insert the venous line again and make sure the bevel is facing me facing upwards and the needle should be at least three fingers again apart um, which helps prevent recirculation of the unclean blood um, the blood that's full of the toxins and the clean blood the blood that's already been through the dialyzer Again, I'm just taping that down. Um, I always make sure as well that I have the remote control from the machine um, next to me, should the machine alarm during treatment. Um, and also that way I can also monitor my BP throughout treatment um, these Fresenius 5008 machines have uh, BP monitors on them as well uh, which is very handy um, so now before I connect to the machine I just make sure that the BP cuff isn't trapped anywhere and make sure the lines are not trapped um, I check that the blood pump is stopped because we don't want the saline shooting out of the lines and then I clamp the arterial line disconnect it from the, the rings connector and then I connect it to the arterial line and open the clamps and then I am going to connect up the substitute port um, because I am wanting what's called post dilution HDF uh, which stands for um, hemodiafiltration um, 
which um, I will have talked to you a little bit about in, in the first bit of the video. So now I'm removing the um, connector from the Venus line, the rinse connector and connecting the Venus line up um, always make sure that the lines are clamped and unclamped um, and now um, I am starting the process of dialysis it will ask me to confirm to start the blood pump um, and once my blood has been detected uh, by, by the machine um, dialysis will have commenced and then I will be able to insert my anticoagulant through the venous port um, which obviously stops the blood from clotting because it's going round um, an extra corporeal circuit i.e. It's, it's been pumped outside your body um, another little tip is that I always make sure that my chair which has a recline facility on it with a hand control um, make sure everything's plugged in before you actually get on treatment um, and make sure the chair is, is far enough forward away from the wall should I become um, lightheaded during treatment if my blood pressure started to drop um, I would then be able to lie myself far enough back um, and, and be able to check my blood pressure as well with the remote control um, but to prevent that happening um, I always monitor my BP throughout treatment um, you will see, or may not see as, this, as the case may be, um, I will check my blood pressure 10 minutes after, um, after treatment has started and, um, and then I tend to check it possibly about an hour again after treatment has commenced and then about halfway through. Um, if I was starting to feel lightheaded and unwell I would reduce down the UF goal, um, i.e. how much excess fluid um, I'm taking off during treatment. So I'm just switching off because it says there's no heparin syringe detected. Um, some machines do, they do have heparin connected up to the machine. Um, I'm just going to increase the blood pump slightly now to um, get the, the blood flowing through the dialyzer um, and then I will um, insert my tinsapari through the venous port and um, to stop the machine from clotting um, and to do that we have to wipe the venous port again just to make sure it's as um, clean as possible um, before we insert the, the anticoagulant um, and again just give it a few seconds to um, dry I always check the expiry date um, and it's the right dose on the tin as a parry um, just for my own peace of mind really um, so that's gone in now and um, we're up and running I just fold my pack over um, to use at the end of treatment. Some people may prefer to use um, a new pack at the end of treatment but again it's, it's only my, my own microorganisms that I'm exposed to um, 
as long as you don't touch any of the key parts um, which I've talked about a little bit in a, in a previous blog that I did um, which are the ends of connectors which are going to come into contact with your bodily fluids um, you know you need to make sure that you don't touch the ends of any connectors um, and that is what is known as ANTT which is antiseptic non-touch technique um, you know that's that's one of the most important things um, I'm going to steadily increase my pump speed now um, my pump speed I have round about 350 um, people that have um, lines in um, can only usually get up to a pump speed of about 300 uh, mils a minute um, which again um, you know that is why um, NICE which is the National Institute for Healthcare and Excellence uh, recommends that um, all patients who are um, suitable to have fistula formation um, you know do so um, they, they class it as the gold standard form of dialysis access um, lines are actually should only be used as a temporary measure uh, for emergency dialysis um, and maybe those who have got a live donor um, lined up or have needed to start dialysis um, sooner rather than later. Um, so that's it for now. I'm going to get on with the rest of my treatment and um, I'll show you at the end how to, um, how to remove the needles. So thank you.